What's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. In this one, I'll be going over my top 10 list for the best JRPG remakes. Now, I have a bit of criteria here for this one. These games are remakes, so it wasn't just a remaster where they took the same game and upped the resolution to HD or something, but rather these games have been completely overhauled and almost rebuilt from the ground up to be presented as something brand new, a modern new release. We've had a ton of these done recently, and you'll notice that quite a few of the games on this list are more recent releases as developers are giving us all great new ways to play classic games, and I am all about that. So with all that said, let's jump right into the games. And first up on the list, I have Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. This game is just a ton of fun, and I am so happy I recently got to replay it when it came out. This remake just reminded me of how creative developers can get with turn-based combat. It was so beyond its time. I just love Thousand Year Door so much. Now, the remake here for the Switch revitalized a beloved classic, capturing the essence of the original while enhancing it with some modern upgrades. The series' distinctive paper-themed aesthetic is just so much more vibrant and detailed than ever and is honestly one of the best-looking Switch games out there. I just can't believe how good this game looks. It is just absolutely beautiful. And the world and humor, everything just really shines in this game. And I'm so happy Nintendo decided to remake this one. The gameplay remains true to its roots with this turn-based combat and exploration. You'll guide Mario through a series of colorful, puzzle-filled environments, battling enemies using the timing-based actions and the turn-based combat. The remake introduces some nice quality of life improvements such as streamlined menus and much more refined controls, which is always a nice touch. I always appreciate it when developers do that. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake is a must-play for both returning fans and anyone who hasn't played it. This is the definitive Paper Mario game. I think this is by far the best Paper Mario game ever made. I really liked Origami King more recently, but Thousand Year Door is just an absolute classic and a must play for any fan of Mario RPGs. And Nintendo honestly has been absolutely wild with the Mario RPG releases as of late. Uh, we recently got Super Mario RPG, we got Thousand Year Door, and Mario and Luigi Brothership all coming out so close together. It's been great for fans of these games. This one offers a nice, nostalgic, but fresh experience that really, really stands out on the Switch. All right, moving on, I have Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. This is a really unique Fire Emblem game and one of my favorite remakes of all time. Shadows of Valencia is a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden, the second entry in the series. Now, this remake retains the series' signature tactical combat, but introduces unique elements that really set it apart. There's really no other Fire Emblem game out there like Fire Emblem Echoes. It features dungeon crawling and exploration and offers an interesting break from the traditional grid-based battles and adds variety to the gameplay. Some fans of the series weren't big on this, but I actually really enjoyed it for the most part. Sure, it had some issues here and there, but overall, I really liked how it was implemented. The combat system is really challenging, as you would expect, especially for earlier Fire Emblem titles, and it's very rewarding. The game has a big focus on strategic positioning and careful planning. The introduction of allowing players to rewind turns provides that safety net for mistakes and therefore encourages experimentation with each of the battles, which as someone who's not the greatest at tactical games, I always appreciate. Fire Emblem Echoes is a remarkable blend of classic and modern tactical RPG mechanics, and it offers a rich narrative, super deep character development, and amazing gameplay. Its unique structure and beautiful presentation make it memorable and enjoyable for anyone who's a longtime fan of Fire Emblem and also anyone who started playing Fire Emblem games when it became really more popular and wants to go back and experience some of the older games and what they have to offer. Definitely don't miss out on Fire Emblem Echoes. It's on the 3DS. I know it may be a little harder to play because it hasn't got that re-release on Switch like everything else seems to have. But if you have a 3DS or a 2DS or access to one, and you haven't played Fire Emblem Echoes, definitely pick it up, give it a shot, I think you'll like it. All right, moving on, I've got Star Ocean, the second story R. Now, anyone who has been around this channel for a while probably knew this was going to be on this list. I have sang the praises of this game for so long. I mean, since it was released, I mean, even since it was announced, and I will continue to do so. This is the perfect list for this one too, because as a ground up remake is concerned, this one fits the bill, and it's just an amazing experience all around. 
second story, R retains the real-time combat system that fans loved, but with significant improvements that make battles more fluid and strategic, and to be honest, just far more fun. The skill system is expansive, and it offers extensive customization options and varied playstyles. Crafting and item creation mechanics are robust, adding depth and rewarding experimentation. There's tons of quality of life features such as streamlined menus and much faster load times. The graphics are insanely good. The combat system just feels much better to play. And overall, this combination of everything they've done with this remake enhanced the experience significantly. The upgrade to the visuals that I mentioned before might be the most impressive thing about this remake. This game shines with updated graphics that feature that HD 2D style that I really like. But something unique about Second Story R and just this game in general is it takes that HD 2D style and implements it in a more 3D space. And with that comes some very interesting things that they do with the art style. It's just really amazing how they managed to blend that original Pixar art style with the more modern aesthetics. This right here is just one of the best remakes. It's compelling story, dynamic combat, and stunning presentation make it a standout title in the JRPG genre. Whether you're revisiting this classic or exploring it for the first time because you're interested, you will find this is a great experience from start to finish. I love the second story R. The Pokemon Let's Go games are next up, and these are really incredible remakes of the original Pokemon. Pokemon games and while the gameplay in terms of catching Pokemon etc is a little more on the simple side even for a Pokemon game it still feels really great to play and the more I look back on it and revisit it the more I appreciate it for what it is. The games are set in the Kanto region you'll choose between Pikachu or Eevee as your starter Pokemon. The story remains largely faithful to the original with added cutscenes and character interactions that enhance the experience. One of the most notable changes in Let's Go is the integration of Pokemon Go style catching mechanics. This game came out hot on the tails of Pokemon Go's massive success and popularity. Instead of traditional wild Pokemon battles that we're all used to, you'll use motion controls to throw Pokeballs. Now, I remember when it was first released, you could buy a Pokeball controller with a joystick on it and you could play the entire game with this Pokeball and it really was quite interesting. I owned one. You could like do the throwing motion with the Pokeball to catch them. It was really interesting the way they did it. I wonder if those things are still floating around out there. I don't know. Anyway, the games are really great in the way they streamline many elements such as HM moves, which are now replaced by special abilities used by Pikachu or Eevee. The classic turn-based battle system is retained for trainer battles though, which is very good. Additionally, the game support co-op play, allowing a second player to join in. Overall, the Let's Go games are delightful remakes that successfully merge the old and the new. They offer a fresh, yet familiar adventure through Kanto with engaging mechanics, really charming visuals and art style, and it's just really a memorable, different type of Pokemon experience. I was really hoping they'd continue the Let's Go series and remake some of the other classics in this style, but this was it. This was the one they did, and we may never see another Let's Go game, but definitely try this one out if you haven't yet. Live Alive is next up on the list. Now, I never even heard of this game before it was announced, to be honest, and it does seem like some of the inspiration for Octopath Traveler came from Live Alive, which definitely sparked my interest because I'm a huge fan of the Octopath games. Live Alive really hones in on that diverging stories aspect, though. The gameplay is as diverse as the stories, with each chapter featuring different mechanics and combat systems tailored to its setting. From turn-based battles and stealth missions to puzzle solving and strategy, Live Alive keeps you engaged with its constantly evolving gameplay. The remake retains the core mechanics of the original but incorporates modern conveniences and quality of life improvements. One of the standout features of the remake though, again, HD 2D art style, which blends pixel art with modern visual effects. I'm a huge fan of this art style if you can't tell, and I look forward to seeing it featured in more remakes in the future. Shout out to the Dragon Quest remakes coming soon. Can't wait to play Dragon Quest 3 remake. I'm definitely hyped for that. Anyway, back to Live Alive. Overall, this is a remarkable remake that successfully revitalizes a classic JRPG, one that many, many people in the US have never experienced and like me, probably hadn't even heard of prior to this release. It's got a truly unique and innovative storytelling format. It's got very gameplay and really stunning presentation. If you're a fan of Octopath and other turn-based JRPGs like it, definitely give Live Alive a try. It's super unique. There's nothing out there like it. Next up is probably one of the biggest overhauls we've seen from a remake of all time. And I'm throwing both of these games in here and it's Final Fantasy VII Remake 
and rebirth i mean these games were truly built from the ground up and it's just an all new experience with a ton of new elements rooted in the original game brought to life with modern graphics and mechanics the combat system is definitely a standout feature blends that real-time action with strategic elements from the original's turn-based combat this is one of my all-time favorite jrpg combat systems final fantasy 7 remake and rebirth really really perfected it you can switch between characters on the fly using their unique abilities and limit breaks to gain an advantage in battle the atb system is reimagined allowing for seamless transitions between combat and command based inputs this hybrid approach makes combat super dynamic and incredibly satisfying some of these really really long drawn out boss battles take some thought and planning into how you're going to approach them really really well done and something that i absolutely enjoy now the initial remake covers only the midgar portion of the game so it's much more linear and story is a really heavy focus but rebirth expands on things and features a ton of new and more open environments that make this game feel absolutely massive and let's not forget queen's blood which i personally got absolutely addicted to i mean i couldn't put this down and the quest line for the game is massive Overall, these games skillfully blend the old with the new to create an experience that is both nostalgic and really innovative. The expanded story, engaging combat, stunning presentation make this a must play for fans of the original and anyone new to Final Fantasy VII. Next up on the list, I have Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now, Nintendo attempted to remake or remaster this game rather before on the new 3DS, but in my opinion, it was a absolute failure. It looked and performed terribly, and I couldn't play it even though I really wanted to. It was just really bad, but on the Switch, they gave it another go, and I'm very, very happy they did, because this is one of my all-time favorite JRPGs, and I think the Switch is the perfect place for it. The narrative of Xenoblade Chronicles remains one of its strongest aspects. Set in the body of two titans, the story follows Shulk and his friends as they embark on a massive journey. The characters and the world and everything is just really well developed and really set the stage for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3, which I also absolutely adore. The gameplay of Xenoblade Chronicles features this incredibly unique combat system where you control one character while issuing commands to other characters. Positioning is a super important aspect of everything. The Definitive Edition really introduces amazing quality of life improvements, streamlined quest tracking, much more improved navigation. These enhancements make the experience so much better. This is a gigantic open world with a ton to do. So having all those quality of life features definitely help make the experience that much better. This remake also includes a new epilogue story, Future Connected, which adds several hours of additional content and explores the aftermath of the main game. I always welcome new content and remakes and I really enjoyed playing through it. It wasn't the best thing ever and I know some fans of the series had some gripes with it, but I really enjoyed it. I think it was a fun time. Moving on, next up I have Near Replicant. Now this is a stunning reimagining of the original action RPG, bringing its unique narrative to a modern audience with enhanced visuals, improved combat, and one of my favorite things, additional content. This version breathes new life into a cult classic, and after the success of Nier Automata, gives fans of that game a chance to go and experience the original in a new light. Nier Replicant's narrative is one of the most compelling aspects of this game. It follows a young protagonist seeking to save his ailing sister in a post-apocalyptic world, filled with all the mystery and oddities that you would come to expect from a Nier game. The cast is deeply memorable, and I had a ton of fun playing it. The original Nier hasn't aged all that well, it released on the PS3, and while it was fun, Nier Automata took things up a notch with its gameplay and aesthetic. The remake significantly improves the combat system, making it more fluid and engaging. You can seamlessly switch between melee and magic attacks, which is really nice. I mean, the inclusion of new weapons and abilities adds nice variety to the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. The game also retains its mix of gameplay styles, including hack-and-slash combat, puzzle solving, and exploration. Nier is just a truly unique game, and while it moves a lot slower than Automata, it takes a lot longer to get things going. Once it does, it's a ton of fun. I just think that this is a masterful reimagining of a really underrated classic game. It has a really deep and complex story, and all of that coupled with the improved combat and new story content make this a must-play for any fan of the Nier universe. Definitely give this one a go. Next up is another game that really got the full-on overhaul, and that's Trials of Mana. This game is incredible, and it's kind of crazy how well executed this was. 
Sure, there are a couple of minor gripes here and there, but the ability to bring this classic into the modern landscape is impressive. The remake retains some of the core action RPG mechanics of the original, but with really, really significant improvements. I mean, the combat system is much more dynamic and fluid with a real-time action focus that allows for combo attacks, dodges, and special abilities. The character progression system is really thorough and interesting. It features class changes that unlock new abilities and alter the character's appearance, which I always enjoy in my RPGs. This game also includes a ton of quality of life enhancements, so a big plus on that department, making this far more accessible to more modern audiences. I think one of the most impressive things about this remake, though, has to be the visuals. I mean, Trials of Mana is stunning. The remake boasts this colorful, detailed art style. I mean, the character models and 3D environments are stunning, and the way they did this art style make it kind of timeless, so hopefully they don't have to remake this again. This looks amazing. I mean, Trials of Mana is a really successful and heartfelt remake that honors the original while providing tons of really significant enhancements to the game. And all of these upgrades make this an action JRPG that I really enjoy returning to. Surprisingly, this actually was a game I had planned on skipping when it was first announced, but I gave it a try. I was super happy I did because I was immediately hooked. Finally, last up on the list is Persona 3 Reload. I've been wanting this remake right here for a very, very long time. Persona 3 is one of my all-time favorite games, and I think it aged a little poorly and wasn't the best game in the series to go back to when it came to more modern Persona games. So when Atlas announced a remake of Persona 3, I was incredibly excited, and Reload does not disappoint. Persona 3 Reload retains the deeply engaging narrative that I really, really love. The story explores some extremely dark themes. I mean, this is a very dark game. So if you're into like really complex, dark stories, then this one's for you. And it's a story that has stuck with me over the years for sure. I actually return to this one quite often because it's one of those games that with new playthroughs, I discover new elements to the story or different perspectives. I mean, the writing, the world building, everything is really impressive. This remake introduces improved combat mechanics, adding elements from Persona 5 that make everything feel really fresh and modern. You can now directly control party members, a significant enhancement over the original's AI-controlled allies, which has always been one of my biggest criticisms of the original game. The social link system, which involves building relationships with other characters to unlock new abilities and personas, is also much more fluid and refined offering much deeper interactions and more meaningful choices. One of the most impressive upgrades in Persona 3 Reload though, definitely the enhanced presentation. The game features amazing new character models and, and beautifully reimagined environments, bringing everything to life. Tartarus is heavily improved from the presentation standpoint as well. The art style retains its unique charm and I really, really appreciate that. Everything about this remake hit the mark and it's one of my favorite Persona games now. This truly is a great game, so if by chance you haven't had a chance to play it, then you absolutely should. Anyway, that's it for me on this one, everyone. That is my top 10 list of JRPG remakes. These games were all rebuilt from the ground up and to me, feel like games that could have been brand new releases today. To me, that's the mark of a remake versus a remaster, a topic that has had differentiating opinions since the remakes and remasters started rolling in. Be sure to let me know in the comments below if there are any remakes that you think should make the list. What do you think of the remakes on this list? And what are your opinions on remasters versus remakes? Do you prefer the remaster route where they just take the original game, put it in HD and release it? Or do you prefer the remakes where they rebuild it from the ground up and kind of add some new elements and style to the game itself? Personally, I'm loving the remake route. We have gotten some really, really great games recently because of it. Now, I've also created a Discord for us, so if you like JRPGs and want to discuss them in depth, just hop in. There's a link in the description below. So until next time, I'm out.